Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my family are originally from Wales. My mother came to Islam, Allah blessed us with Islam. And I grew up, I was born in London, in Greenwich. And I grew up there, I studied my education until the age of 21, as do many people there in the university system. And then after that, I decided to travel to Syria. When I traveled to Syria, I travel with the intention of migrating to Syria for the purposes of seeking knowledge. And I remained in Syria for about four and a half, five years, after which I traveled on to Hijaz. And in my time in Syria, I was honored to study with some of the great scholars of their time. In Quran, for example, Sheikh Muhammad Sukkar, in Hadith, Sheikh Nuruddin al Itar, in Fiqh, Sheikh Ramadan al Bouti and also with uh, Sheikh Wahbi Zuhaili and many other great scholars that reside and some of them have passed into the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala since. And then after that I moved to Hijaz and I continued my studies there and Alhamdulillah I also studied in India and Pakistan and Morocco and I continue to study because in, in essence the path of knowledge is a path that is never ending. As much as one studies, one realizes the amount of knowledge that is still there and that remains that the person does not possess. And so I continue to study, alhamdulillah, even here in Malaysia, I've traveled to, and even in fact yesterday was with a particular scholar that I studied to work with. And alhamdulillah, my teachers, to talk about my teachers would take a lot of time because by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I've received permission to narrate the hadith and Islamic sciences from more than 400 scholars worldwide. And to be honest with you, I think that there are far more similarities than there are differences. But if there are differences, I think the differences occur in how Malaysians, mashallah, are very polite and very mature and have excellent Islamic adab and decorum, particularly with their scholars and also with their teachers and parents. And this is something which is very much lacking in the West. People in the West may have access to knowledge, particularly in the information era that we live in, but what is lacking is the true Islamic decorum that is required of a Muslim in his life. And this is something that you will find a great deal a lot of in Malaysia. Also in Malaysia, another thing that I have noticed uh, is that the, the Muslims here are very relaxed. And sometimes I find that the Muslims are in fact too relaxed and they need to really uh, maybe take from their Western counterparts and have a focus and, and, and focus more uh, on their goals in life I find particularly the Muslims of Malaysia are very unorganized uh, in the way that they arrange their time and their life goals and somewhat lazy. And perhaps this is something that can be exchanged between the Western world and Muslims in the Eastern part of the world. And the third question, as I understand it, is that the Muslims nowadays have many differences amongst themselves. Is it okay to accept these differences or should we work to make commonalities together and unity? And in answering this, I think it's very important to look at what the Prophet ﷺ has said. We find in the authentic hadith that the Prophet ﷺ made two supplications that were accepted in a series of three supplications. And the third one was not accepted. And the third one was, oh, oh Allah, may it be such that my ummah do not fight amongst each other. And this supplication was not answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the reality is that the ummah will continue to have differences amongst themselves. But what we need to do is we need to work on the commonalities and 
the commonalities are far more than the differences that occur and that exist. And I think that a lot of the time it, there is a lack of knowledge on both sides of arguments. So for example, we find some people who say that we just follow the hadith, the authentic hadith, and they disparage the ones who follow uh, one of the four imams of fiqh. And then we find that the people who follow the imams of fiqh also sometimes go to extremes and disparage those who follow the hadith. And they do so in an unacademic way and it, it then becomes clouded with emotion and passion and then tensions rise and we have all sorts of problems. I think we need to sit down and we need to analyze the arguments academically and come to conclusions in regards to them academically.